Hey there, thanks for tuning into Duck Bricks. I'm Chris, and to celebrate 100 years of Disney, Lego has sent me what is basically their Disney Princesses Battle Pack, but is actually the Enchanted Treehouse. It is a full build that combines almost every single Disney princess available. They have replicated them in mini doll form, and it includes a crazy amount of characters all to inhabit this really nice and magical treehouse, featuring some brand new transparent opalescent purple pieces, which look so, so cool. This is such a unique design for a treehouse, albeit very, very expensive. And we'll talk about that at the end of the review. But so I think it's time we just jump right into the way the set looks because there's a lot to cover here. This might be one of my favorite Disney princess sets. It's so vibrant. It's so much fun, but it is a lot of money. So let's jump into it right now. Okay, so this is the Enchanted Treehouse, set number 43215. It comes with a whopping 13 mini dolls, 1,016 pieces, retails for 160 US dollars, 170 euros, and 150 British pounds, making it not really the best value in terms of actually being good for price per part, but that's a bit of an outdated metric because obviously there's a lot of large pieces included and you get all the figures, but I do have to get the elephant out of the room and say that, yeah, what you're hearing about the set is true. It's not worth it. To be honest, it's really not worth the value. It's a great set, but for me, just not worth the price. And we'll be talking a lot more about the price and value as we work our way through the review. But I just want to get off that and say it as it is that this really feels like a pretty egregiously overpriced set that will probably sell fairly well because it has so many different characters. In fact, the mini dolls included are Elsa and Anna from Frozen, Alice in Wonderland, Belle, Wendy, Tinkerbell, Mirabelle, Moana, Mulan, Pocahontas, Raya, Tiana, and Jasmine which is not only more than every other mini doll set that we've ever gotten before, but pretty much covers all of the Disney princesses from the entire 100 years of Disney's run. One thing I really like about the set is that it combines both the classics and the modern tales. You have some of the very first Disney princesses from the first Disney animated movies existing alongside some of the most modern ones, like the characters from Encanto, Araya, and the Last Dragon. Of course, you have everything in between. Frozen does have the representation that it definitely needed to get in the set as well. But altogether, it feels like a culmination of different eras of Disney storytelling coming together in one single Lego set. Now, a lot of folks have taken to calling this the Princess Battle Pack, and yeah, that's basically what this is. You get all of the important Disney princesses, or basically all of them. I can't really think of any one that's missing. I'm sure there are some that are missing, and folks in the comments are definitely going to say Princess Leia, but I think pretty much you get all the ones that really are going to be forefront in the marketing, and that's really cool to actually get them all in one set, and a set that's actually really fun and gives me a lot of LEGO Elves vibes as well. Again though, we'll be talking a lot about value at the end because I don't really feel happy about the value of the set. It's a really good set, it has a lot of things going for it, a lot of amazing new recolors, the mini dolls are great to get all in one set, but it is just too expensive. But without further ado, let's just jump into the main review. We'll talk about the review, I'll share my thoughts briefly on the mini dolls themselves, and then we'll talk about value more in depth at the end of the video. What's really cool about the build is that this was split into two parts. I actually was able to build this with a good friend of mine, and essentially, I built this part, my friend built this part, and it was really nicely set up because you could just take one of the instruction manuals, dedicate it entirely to just this, and work on that, while somebody else could take a different instruction manual, dedicated to just this other section, and work on that. It was a really nice split in terms of the pieces, and they didn't even really advertise it, but this was a really good thing to kind of celebrate LEGO's Build Together initiative, which allowed for a lot of fun builds with a friend and really just made it a lot easier to build these as two separate chunks, basically only connected by this zip line. Speaking of the zip line, that actually has a bit of a function where you can take one of the characters, it says Mulan, but you can really use any of them, and have them slide down across the zip line. It is a very simple function that literally just works by gravity, but it works really well and it's really satisfying to see the characters be able to do that. Otherwise, though, I think it makes sense to just focus in on each individual component and then talk about how they are as a whole later on. So this is the main part of the Enchanted Treehouse. It has a really nice exterior to it, and I will say I love the color scheme of how this came together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually detach this 
zip line out of the back here so we can just focus in on this particular building right here and just enjoy the color scheme and what it has to offer. In terms of the exterior, you have a nice teal grass, which really makes it feel more enchanted and otherworldly. The foliage is using recolored versions of the LEGO Lord of the Rings fern element that was introduced for the Rivendell set in the standard green, but has since appeared in lime in some other LEGO City sets, as well as this very nice transparent and opalescent pink color, which they utilize in some underwater scenes for both City and Monkey Kids so far, which looks so, so good as enchanted plants. They have also recolored the classic crystal element introduced all the way back for LEGO Aquazone in the 1990s, but also used for the Power Miners crystals in this transparent opalescent purple color, which is so great to see. That just looks really nice. I love the way that these actually turned out. And then you are also using the elves crystal pieces in that opalescent color up at the top here for decorations on the doorway. And then over here, you've got really nice details in terms of these brand new pieces that were introduced for LEGO Super Mario. Just earlier this year, we actually got these ice pieces that are really unique panels for LEGO. They basically have some 3D geometry to them where you can see that they aren't perfectly flat. They actually were supposed to represent ice, but here they are molded in the transparent opalescent satin purple, which looks great, as well as a recolor of this in transparent opalescent satin pink for the Nexo Knights windscreen. Overall, that really makes the color scheme of this pop, and it really does stand out. It's hard to capture on camera, but the shine of these pieces is just so, so nice, and I'm a big fan of how they really add the enchanted look and feel to the palace itself. Now, the color scheme is pretty simple. You've got mostly this light aqua color being used for the tree bark, which is an interesting color for tree bark, but again, it really brings out the fact that these are otherworldly types of designs. You have really nice for the brick, you have purple, which is a good color complement to the light blues and the teals of the treehouse itself. And again, this really reminds me of Lego Elves, which was one of my favorite mini doll centric themes, which is a very much a good thing. I love this fantastical color scheme. Everything just came together really nicely. One of the new prints included in the set is a new print for the mushroom as well. It is utilizing the BB-8 head from Star Wars, but they have printed these metallic silver, almost like drum lacquered silver-esque printing for the mushrooms themselves, which is just a really nice piece to have and overall just ties the scene together, making it feel a lot more, well, enchanted. Now the way the doorway opens here is actually really cool. They are using the classic opening stair element, which was introduced for Lego Harry Potter back in 2001 but the way this opens from the front is that it kind of folds open like that and you've got a staircase that leads in. This is a doorway that feels really magical and I love that they've been able to do that. It is a very unique way of utilizing some very classic older Lego pieces just to give a more unique effect to these stairs opening up, which is something I am a big, big fan of how they did that. And then on the back here, you can see this is what the interior of the treehouse itself looks like. You can twist this open like that to allow stairs to bring you on upwards to the second level, and you actually have quite a lot of detail hidden away in this set as well. Starting from the bottom, you have what looks to be a library section here, so there's a library with a nice sofa to be able to read books on. Obviously you have one of the hourglass elements as well, molded in the transparent, clear, and the tan color, which is really nice that they actually finally brought that piece back from LEGO Elves. First introduced or reintroduced in the Frozen Castle set, which was kind of a mini doll but large Frozen Castle, but now they're using it in stuff like LEGO Dreams and whatnot. Moving on to this area here, you have what looks to be a drink machine. So you've got like a pretty modern-esque, which is a little bit strange, I guess, for me to see like a modern thing here. I would have imagined this would be more of a magical type of environment, but I guess it makes sense because again, we are blending different eras of Disney and different eras of Disney throughout a hundred years. So it makes sense that you have more ancient or kind of classical looking stuff like the bookshelf here. And then you have something more modern on this side for the drink machine. One thing I want to mention before we move on is they have also recolored the Power Miner's rock element in the transparent opalescent purple, which is probably one of my favorite recolors in the entire set. It just looks so cool, and this also acts as a rock climbing wall, so you can actually have your mini dolls be climbing on these different points to be able to get up to a viewing platform, which we'll take a look at in a second. Moving on upwards here, we have a little training dummy. So this seems to be almost Frozen inspired because obviously you've got the sword. This shield just looks like it's inspired by Frozen and this can 
be fully removed, so you basically can just remove this entire block and you can use it as a training dummy for practice. Obviously Mulan can use it as well, and it's utilizing some really nice transparent elements which were colored in transparent first for LEGO Minecraft, but now makes us feel like it has been sculpted out of pure ice, which is a really nice detail to get. Also on this level, there's really nothing else to do inside there other than storage for the training dummy, but you've got a bit of a gear mechanism here for a lookout post. What you do is you can pose a mini doll, or maybe we'll get one that isn't necessarily holding a super large accessory, but you can pose a mini doll right here, and then you can just use the gears to allow them to look through the telescope, and it's a very simple design, but it just works out very well. Again, utilizing those opalescent pink pieces for the domes. Not a new recolor for the set, but again, really nice to get that, and it just acts as a lookout post. Finally, there is one more top level here. If we move onwards to the top, you can see this is what the back looks like. You have some nice decals showing like a to-do sign, a map of presumably where the actual treehouse is, pictures showing the princesses spending time together, and then some analysis being done on these gems here, which add some maybe a bit of a science aspect to things. You have a flower that's being blooming right here, and then just some little drawers that hold different accessories, some of which are actually recycled from Lego Harry Potter, like this one right here, but just add to the overall look and feel of the scene itself. And with that, I think we've basically taken a look at this side of the building. You can see this is the entirety of the building from the back. We can now move that around in the front and see that here. But let's move this aside and take a look at the other building itself, which is a little bit less of a building, more of, I would say, a play area and display area to showcase the mini dolls, but it works out just fine. So what we're going to do is I'll detach the zip line there, reattach it to the back here, and we can take a closer look at this entire section of the build itself. Now, obviously, I'm going to actually remove the mini dolls here because we just want to take a look at the environment as it is. So this is a nice, like, more nature-inspired look and feel for this. It's got a waterfall. It's reusing those nice Power Miners rock pieces for the opalescent color here. The waterfall, of course, can open up and you can access space on the inside. And it's using one of the panel pieces as a roof, which makes a lot of sense to me. One thing that's nice here is there is a bit of a either a spinning area or a dance area. I don't know if it's supposed to be something where you can maybe display your mini dolls and use them to kind of showcase the different mini dolls included, but this is what that looks like there. Now, if you just got to move one of the trees back to prevent them from falling off, but it is a pretty simple design. Again, using that opalescent color, <laughs> count the number of times I say transparent opalescent satin in this video because there's a lot of them. Now, moving on to the back here, Honestly, not a lot of interior. This is a pretty basic design, but you do have a treasure chest with a map inside of it that's kind of more piratey themed. And I like how they're mixing the lavender and the gold color. It really makes us feel more alive and feel like it pops more. Otherwise, what you see is basically what you get for this. There is a slide to play around with the mini dolls. There is one of those pre-molded staircase pieces to go on upwards. And it is just a really nice companion to the main building that feels more inspired by nature than anything else. Honestly, that's about all I have to say about the buildings themselves, and we can now jump backwards and take a look at my final thoughts. Of course, also taking a look at all of the mini dolls first. So here you can see the official lineup for the set, 13 different mini dolls from across multiple different eras of Disney. I've done my best to kind of line them up based on the classic stuff first and then the more modern stuff afterwards. Starting from left to right, we have Tinkerbell, Wendy, Tiana, you have Pocahontas, Belle, Alice in Wonderland, Jasmine, Mulan, Moana, Elsa, Anna, Raya, and Mirabelle. Now there are some notable exclusions from the lineup for classic Disney princesses. There's no Snow White, there's no Cinderella, there's no Aurora, and there's no Ariel, which are ones that I would have figured would have been included, but for whatever reason they were not included in the set. Ariel makes sense because we just got a ton of live-action Little Mermaid sets, so I figured they would want to focus on different characters, but it is weird not getting Snow White or Cinderella or Aurora because those are typically what you would associate with the classic Disney princesses, although I think the lineup here is pretty good and it's still very indicative of the history of Disney spanning over the 100 years, which is what we are celebrating. Now, in terms of the characters themselves, we get a lot of really nice detail in each and every one of the mini dolls. For example, Tinkerbell is using the same wing technique that they used for some of the DC Superhero Girl sets, with a fabric or kind of vinyl piece being included that goes around the neck and around the waist, like so. Each of them has a specialized hair piece as well that is particularly designed for the characters themselves. Wendy is one of the more simple ones, but still has some nice metallic blueprinting. 
we can get to Tiana here with the nice lime or kind of not quite lime but it's kind of a greenish spring green dress here again nice hair piece being used here and what's really great is that all these hair pieces are used on the minifigures as well which means that they are compatible with anything this is one of our first Pocahontas mini dolls and it is utilizing the hair piece they introduced for the collectible minifigure series which is good to see it works very well on a mini doll as well Belle here is pretty standard using a book with the accessory here being Once Upon a Time, which makes total sense for that particular story, as you can see. Here is Alice in Wonderland, which is using a really nice dual molded headpiece with the black ribbon on the top. I think that turned out very well. Jasmine here is one of the more detailed figures of the set because the hairpiece she uses is actually half painted and half rubberized black. So you have the painted blue braids on the back here. She's wearing a nice blue classic outfit and using the banjo as the accessory. Mulan here is pretty much unchanged based on previous mini doll appearances with a very standardized friend style of hairpiece. The bow in dark tan, which is actually really nice to get. That is a very useful recolor for the bow. And then of course this vine to be able to swing downwards. Moana here, basically the same as what you've seen. The only downside is that unfortunately you can't really use mini dolls to row boats because their hands do not move. Honestly, one of my biggest problems with mini dolls is you cannot move the hands, so it would be nice to actually be able to rotate the oar, but that's not how these work. Elsa here is utilizing a specialized sparkly cape, which does look really nice. It really reflects the light very well. Also has this Lego Elves magic piece being used to represent the frozen powers. Anna has a cape as well with a dual color to it, so you've got kind of this pinkish color on the back, and then on the front you have a purple color, so overall just a really nice design. I like how they have custom fabric elements for these characters. Raya is, again, pretty much unchanged from her other appearances, wielding not the sword that she usually uses, which is unfortunate. They made a brand new mold for her sword that's really customized, but they did not include it for the set. However, she still has the nice dual molded hat and head combo. And then finally, Mirabelle is basically the same as the Encanto sets, but of course looks really great and is using the accordion piece, which is just brick built out of multiple different bricks, but just looks pretty good in the way it's set up, and was pretty much the same way in the Encanto sets themselves. But with the mini dolls out of the way, I think it's time to talk about the value of the set. Because, again, I shared my overall thoughts on how I felt about the value earlier on in the review, but I really just want to emphasize how this just feels a little bit wacky to me in terms of how much everything costs. And it's really unfortunate that a lot of this is really good. I love the way things are built. I think everything is just done really well. It's just really, really expensive and unreasonably so, especially in Europe. I don't know why it is so expensive in Europe. So the thing about the set is that, again, it's 160 US dollars, not 150, but 160, which is kind of ridiculous for something like this like that is a really high price for the amount of stuff that you get in this set lego has been increasing prices a lot recently and this one feels like maybe it was a victim of those price increases but i'm just not a big fan of how they were really able to price this so much i don't know if this is going to sell well because of the incredibly high price i think that people will definitely get it because it is a nice looking build and it has all these characters it's also really, really expensive, and unreasonably so, in my opinion. Now, the thing about this is that, yes, it does have the 13 mini dolls, and each of those obviously is providing its own value to the set. Having them all included in one set is amazing. It is, after all, the Disney Princess Battle Pack of sorts, so you do get pretty much all of the ones that really are super important in, I guess, the modern era of Disney being utilized throughout the set here. It just feels like it is really high for the price and it is worse off in Europe. In Europe, this roughly translates to 180 US dollars, which is 170 euros. 180 is ridiculous for this. Like, no way this is, this is not 180 dollars. The US price is cheaper at 160, still not great, but it is, it is a little better. And then the British pounds price, 150 pounds, also roughly translates to a very high price of around 170, 180. So again, it feels like LEGO has kind of priced this out of the realm of reasonability, which is really unfortunate because I do think this is a really solid set. I like the way it's put together. The color scheme is amazing. It has so much playability to it. Like, you can do so many different things with the set itself. It's just really disappointing how expensive it is compared to a lot of other LEGO sets currently on the market. It's a great build, but I cannot recommend it for the price. 
But of course, those are just my thoughts, and I'm really curious to hear what you all think of the set in the comments down below. Do you think it's overpriced? Do you think this is worth the price? Have you picked this up already? And if so, what are your thoughts on the building experience? And that's pretty much all I have to say about the set. Really nice, love the color scheme, the build is really fun, this fits very well alongside LEGO Elves and other fantasy forests and treehouses, and it's so vibrant, the color blocking is great, it's just too expensive, and that's all I have to say. All right, and with that, we have summed up our review of the brand new Enchanted Treehouse from LEGO Disney, celebrating 100 years of Disney. This feels like a pretty perfect set to commemorate all of the Disney princesses. It's so cool to see them included all in one set, which is really unprecedented for LEGO to ever do something like this before. At most, we'll get maybe crossovers between two or three of them, but not basically all of them in one set. So very cool to get that. You can basically get the set and have every mini doll you would ever need to complete your Disney Princesses collection, so that is super cool. Although the price admittedly is really, really high for what you get, and I really do feel like it is just way too steep. But of course, those are just my thoughts. Let me know down in the comments below what do you think of this build? Do you like it? Do you dislike it? And overall, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this brand new Enchanted Treehouse. Thanks so much for tuning into Duck Bricks, and bye for now.